Welcome to the Reading Under the Covers podcast, a romance novel podcast. I'm Francesca from Under the Covers book blog, and today I'm bringing you a special new episode that we will be releasing every single Tuesday, and Tuesdays are traditional release day. So we will be bringing you our either most anticipated books of the week or recommendations of the week. So hopefully you guys tune in every Tuesday to see what are the new books that you should be on the lookout for the week. And what I'm most excited about is that I always want to bring you guys the books that maybe were not on your radar before. So today I have five books for you guys that I am really anticipating to read and they sound amazing. They're my picks for the books that I think we should watch out for. And I also have one recommendation from the Under the Covers team. And you'll also be able to already read our review from our guest reviewer, Jen, for that book. So that's gonna be at the end of this episode. Let's dive into the ones that I am most anticipating to read or that I think sound really good. The first one is Bourbon and Lies by Victoria Wilder. And I chose this book because I have seen a few people that are reading already the arcs for the book and there's really great reviews coming out it sounds excellent and I think this would be perfect if you're a fan of like a thrilling romance small town intrigue and forbidden love personally this is actually the first time I hear of Victoria Wilder but I definitely think I need to check out more of her books. In Bourbon and Lies, we have a small town setting. It is set in Fiasco, Kentucky. This town has a family of bad boys that everybody knows you should never fall in love for one of them and that is the Fox Brothers. It is Kentucky, the title has bourbon in it. Yes, there's going to be a bourbon distillery in the story, which is owned by the family. The hero is the eldest Fox brother and a retired cop. The heroine is just a mysterious stranger that has a past that she's running from and ends up living in their town, hiding from those dark secrets of her past. And she comes in and just completely disrupts the quiet life of the Fox brothers when she arrives in town. Despite how wary this eldest Fox brother is he just can't resist her charm and her attitude as she infiltrates basically every aspect of his life she's working at his distillery she's living in his guest house and she likes to call him cowboy and go skinny dipping in his horse trow as all her secrets begin to unravel the danger from her past threatens to collide with his own family's dark history and basically everything is at stake. I think that small touch of mystery, danger, and intrigue will make this a really fun and interesting read. I love how it involves the bourbon setting. I feel like we definitely see a lot more breweries type of stories, and I for one think that it's really fun to see this different type of setting. I hope that it gets explored more in the book. And just that mysterious small town vibe with a touch of forbidden love. It just sounds really amazing and it's definitely on my list to watch out for this week. Now from something that's a slightly a little bit darker, we're going to our spicy fantasy rom-com pick. And I'm gonna be honest, I actually found this book because I thought the cover looks amazing. And as I was reading the blurb, I was just more enamored with it. This is another author that I have never heard of before. I don't know if you guys have, but this one I am super excited to read. And the book is called A Rivalry of Hearts by Tassandra Odette. This is a spicy fantasy rom-com, like I said, where two rival writers compete for a prestigious publishing contract. They are trapped in this magic-fueled bet after a night of fey wine, and Edwina must out-seduce her handsome fey rival during a month-long dueling book tour. I don't know about you, but that sounds so fun. And a premise that I really haven't encountered when it comes to fantasy romances, it gives me a little bit of cozy fantasy vibes, so hopefully it has some of that. Definitely the cover also gives off a historical vibe, so I'm really curious as to how the setting is going to be. Also, I really like the fact that the heroine Edwina is known for her romantic tales, but lacking in real life experience. Meanwhile, the hero William has perfect good looks and an impressive track record. Now, you know this is going to be enemies to lovers, they're going to clash and there's gonna be sparks flying and there's rivalry turning into desire. I think it's gonna be perfect if you're a fan, obviously of enemies to lovers, but also type of academic rivals and quirky heroines. And the fact that it's a fey world makes it all the better. So I am super excited to read this book. And another book that I am also really excited for is Ocean of Sin and Starlight by Karina Haley and I 
we'll put a pin on that because this is actually the spin-off. It is a standalone book, first of all, but there is a book that came out, I think it was last year, and this one is a spin-off of that one. And they're both standalone books, but I do want to read that one. So I know that the right order, if I plan to read that first one, is to go first there. And I'll tell you what all that is in a second. So Ocean of Sin and Starlight is a dark fantasy romance. It features a morally gray pirate and monstrous siren. So think Little Mermaid, but dark. The hero of the story was once a man with dreams and family and he was cursed into a bloodthirsty immortal monster and after a century of trying to tame his monstrous urges in a monastery he meets the heroine a captivating siren who makes him forget his vows he's obsessed with finding her and he joins a notorious pirate crew scouring the high seas and as his monstrous nature resurfaces his quest for her promises danger in all of the dark romance so obviously yes this is going to be perfect if you're a fan of dark romance, dark fantasy, morally gray and complex characters, and if you're looking for a thrilling high sea adventure. Now, personally, I think I need more pirates in my life, so I am all for that. I feel like this has a lot of vibes, sort of like Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, and I love that book so much, which is why I'm super excited to read it. But like I said before, this is a spinoff of another book, and if you intend to read both, you should start there first. So the book that this spins off of is A Ship of Bones and Teeth, and that one is also a standard standalone adult dark fantasy pirate romance that reimagines the Little Mermaid. We have Princess Marin, who was once a mermaid, and she traded her soul to the sea witch Edonia for a human prince's love. She finds herself in a decade-long nightmare of abuse. She's desperate to reverse the spell, and her chance come when pirates, led by fearsome captain, capture her and her cruel prince. The captain has his own vendetta against the witch, and he offers the heroine a dangerous alliance. And as they navigate these treacherous waters and their own dark secrets, her thirst for freedom and revenge matches his ruthless nature. This is more of an actual dark retelling of The Little Mermaid and definitely an intense pirate romance. And like I said, I just need more pirates. So both of these books sound amazing and the hero in Ocean of Sin and Starlight is a character from what I understand in A Ship of Bones and Teeth. So I'm definitely going to read them in order even though they're not really a series and they're just slightly interconnected but both of them are going on my tbr anyway another book that i'm really excited for is knives seasoning and a dash of love by Katrina Kwan. This is a romantic debut for this author, although she has been ghostwriting romance novels for a while and does have already a fantasy out. Another thing you may already know if you follow the blog for any length of time is that I love foodie romances, chef romances, and that's basically what this one is. So it is completely deep into foodie romance territory. It is the romance between a hot-headed chef and his bubbly new sous chef. Now the hero is a super talented chef, all the accolades, and of course with a chip on his shoulder, he rules his kitchen with an iron fist. And our heroine, she might have embellished her resume just a little bit to land this job, and she remembers him from the past when he was very sweet and helpful. Now she has to navigate his new fiery temper and keeping her own secrets under wraps so that she can keep her job that she absolutely desperately needs. I think high stakes culinary clashes in the kitchen are some of my favorite types of foodie romances. I love when they're both actually in the kitchen. In a way it reminds me of the movie Burn that Bradley Cooper was in even though his sous chef was not necessarily bubbly but I love that kind of raw fiery explosion that happens when they're both in the kitchen and there's such a tense environment. So I'm really hoping to get all of those fives in this one. And if you're in and if you're into foodie romances and chef romances like me, I think you definitely need to add it to your TBR. The next book that I'm excited to read is The Woman by the Lake by Kristen Ashley. This is the third book in the Misted Pines series and it is her romantic suspense or romantic thriller series. I have not read the books in this series yet and I'm totally hoping that I can read it 
out of order, although it's not necessarily what I like to do. I like to read my books in order, but this one sounds so good. I just really want to dive into it. Our heroine, Nadia, is trying to deal with the grief of her mother's death, who was brutally murdered, and she does that at a lakeside cabin, cozy cabin in Misted Pines. Her peace is immediately shattered on the first night, and the next day she meets her gruff, party-loving neighbor who immediately clashes with her. As she starts uncovering the cabin's haunted history and the townsfolk's eerie legends, both her and her neighbor are going to be drawn into this web of betrayal and grief and secrets and they have to confront the sinister presence that is determined to drive them away. I think this is going to be perfect if you're a fan of suspenseful romances, emotionally charged romances and a little bit of a supernatural twist, which in my opinion sounds perfect if you're a fan of Nora Roberts or Amanda Quick slash Jane Castle, Jane Ann Krentz romantic suspense stories. Plus I love a good lakeside cabin setting. So I think this is going to be the perfect book to take with you to the beach or to read by the pool. And I'm also very excited that we're going to be talking to Kristen Ashley here on the Reading Under the Covers podcast very soon. So stay tuned for that as well. And the last book that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is actually our recommendation from our guest reviewer Jen from the Under the Covers team and that is Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood. I'll be sure to leave a link to her review in the show notes below. Not in Love by Ellie Hazelwood brings her typical Steminist style of romance, which is perfect if you're looking something a little deeper than the normal rom-com fair. It is an office rivals to lovers. It has a diverse romantic and sexual representation in this romance and the hero falls first. Plus it's set against the backdrop of biotech innovation. Rue, our heroine, is a successful biotech engineer at a promising startup and she finds her stable world is threatened by a hostile takeover that is led by our hero, Eli, who is determined to secure the deal and and can shake his obsession with her despite her being completely off limits. As tensions rise, they embark on a secret, no strings attached affair with a built in deadline the day that one of their companies prevails. Now, as our guest reviewer Jen offers, this is one of Ali Hazelwood's more realistic female main characters yet. Plus, both of the main characters have their own dilemmas involving both romantic and platonic love. While fundamentally, both of them had to make similar decision, but each character was affected in entirely different ways. This is also a sort of sex positive and romance averse heroine, which is definitely more common to see among male characters. So it was very refreshing to see that our heroine is just unapologetically herself. So definitely pick this one up if you're looking for maybe not exactly your typical enemies to lover story. And that's all the books that I have for you today. These are the ones that I feel are standouts from this week's releases. Hopefully you heard something here that you didn't know about and that you might be interested in picking up. Definitely let us know if you do and what you think of them. I'll leave links to all of these releases in the show notes below. And for even more June book releases, also check out our June new releases recap, which is also posted on the blog. It doesn't contain all of the books that are in our book database but it does have a nice sampling of books we're looking forward for the month and that's also going to be linked in the show notes below now if you want to have access to our complete book database of new releases you can find that inside of our community which i will also leave a link for more information on how you can join that now let's keep the conversation going send us a message and let us know what you're going to be reading this week and for more romance books and book recommendations you can find us on the blog at under the covers bookblog.com. Follow all our socials at UTC Book Blog and also on YouTube at Under the Covers Book Blog. And be sure that you're subscribed to get our free newsletter. It will be in your inbox every single Sunday. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.